In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends changed the future of the movie podcast game forever. The reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Sci Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still out. You're still bad. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement. The Have You Seen It Podcast. Welcome back to the Have You Seen It Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. That is uh, Cash Krause. What there he up? Is right there. I usually like to cough right after you <laughs> unmute us. Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, typically. That's usually my thing. That, that was your go-to for yeah. a little while. I know people like uh, like hearing the cough. Of course. I like to hear how I'm doing with the cough. Right. <laughs> how, how has the uh, the virus been? It's been good, man. It's been good. It's been good to a lot of us. A lot of us in the toilet paper business are doing pretty, pretty good. good right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about the fake Wuhan virus? Oh, Mason? is that what they're that, calling that, it now? The fake? That big TP wow. has been propping up, has been telling the media I hate to those blow big TP it up. Companies. It's not big pharma. No. It's not big tobacco that's going to end us. It's big toilet paper. It's big TP all along. Charmin. Scott, oh my God. Angel Soft, and those lovable bears. The toilet the paper, the toilet paper mafia is what they're God. called. They said if you're not going to wipe your ass with us, we're going to shut the whole thing down. That's, that's what, what they, they did. Said. They did. They knew the day sales were up. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're up yearly, day by day. People are finally evolving, and they said we got to uh, we got to set gotta mankind something. back about <laughs> thirty years. I could have set them back a hundred years. <laughs> they released the, the big virus going. on us. They yeah. did. Yeah. People stocked up on that stuff. Yeah. Well, it's the only business, uh, I think, thriving right now is toilet paper. Is big TP. They're the only ones that are the only company that's just stock is through the roof. Yep. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to buy stock anywhere else but in toilet paper right now. But uh, it kind of goes hand to hand with the movie we're talking about, though. It does. Is there more a... Is the, is this the best time for this movie? This The director, anyone could not have picked a more perfect time for this movie to come no. out. It's the most timely movie of it all. It is. It definitely is. It literally just fell into place. I mean, they, they didn't know this was going to happen, obviously. Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> no. But for this movie to come out right now, they got to be pretty well, happy. I, this film won the People's Choice Awards uh, for the Toronto International Film Festival. They did, the Midnight Madness 2019. Award. Yeah, which... I looked on there. There's some questionable movies that I've won in the past, so but uh, that's pretty good. Okay, picking up from. See what happens. We just we start talking about big TP. We do, and, and, and we already shit have, get we shut shit down. Get shut down. Things start. I happening. tell you, they're more powerful than the CIA. They are. They're more yeah. powerful than M6. And yeah. I mean, we got to be careful with those folk. Yeah, they're gonna take the whole thing down. It reminds but, uh, me of like Dark Waters. Yeah. Yeah. Or when you start talking about, like, uh, the government with your friend, and you start hearing, like, a clicking like, or something like that. Like, do you also hear that click? He's like, yeah, I do hear that click. It's just your FBI agent yes. taking Everyone notes got on their own one. one. Yeah. They hired 327 million yeah, I know. FBI Every, yeah. agents to... Where are they hiding these people? On. I don't know. An underground civilization. It, it has It's to probably, be. like, the Sith planet. It is. Where yeah. we have our own planet of just the most boring, mundane... In NSA, people just clicking away. Clicking away, just tracking us. <laughs> All right. Are we, we going to get back to it? Yeah, let's get back to the platform. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. What, what were we saying about it? Oh, that they're calling it a science fiction horror, but yes. I just said that it's more of a uh, social commentary, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a heavy-hitting, brutal look on capitalism, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. I mean, is there anything but that? But... What I kind of liked about it was I th I was kept finding more and more themes to it too mm. as I kept watching it, and I, I think it's something that I think a movie that deserves more than one watch because there's so many things that I think it's trying to say. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about it? Um, I really enjoyed it. 
I thought this movie didn't need to be longer than 90 minutes, and it wasn't. No. You know, I think it sat all together at like 93, 94 minutes. Uh, it was it was clear cut and concise in its approach and what it wanted to do, uh, in its message and trying to get that a- across. It wasn't a bunch of overarching like themes and you didn't have to like put the pieces of the puzzle together. But what I did enjoy this, uh, uh, what I did enjoy about this movie is you understood exactly what what they were saying. Yeah. And by the end of it, you knew exactly what they were yeah, saying. Yeah, it was like being bludgeoned with it. But, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it was it was very... Because the theme was over and over. Yeah, it was yeah. very obvious of what it was trying to say. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, I mean, it's... Uh, what I think is there. there's there's so much more to it. That it's a very obvious theme about capitalism, right? And the poor and the rich and the people being on the bottom looking... Being looked down upon and the people on the top just... Not I think, giving a I, shit about I, yeah, you. Yeah, and not to get too political, but I think with any social This is a very political movie. It is a political <laughs> movie. <laughs> so you're um, gonna be in just trouble if you don't if you try not to get too political. There are there are faults in every kind of ism. Yeah. Possible. And in and there is a there is a tremendous amount of good uh with capitalism, but at the same time there are its faults. And this is this is where you kind of get into that, where it's like someone has two hundred billion dollars while, you know, a quarter of a mil uh quarter of a quarter of Americans don't even can't live paycheck to paycheck. Well, like I said, it's the most timely film maybe to ever come out in the history of uh, of cinema, just because of what's going on right now around the world. It literally right now, you know, Congress is debating how much billions of dollars they're going to give to all these companies. And then they're, (laughs) then they're debating on when they're going to give our thousand dollar checks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, they're going to bail out these companies for yeah. billions and billions. But Which then, I, I but think then they're should, stalling. I, yeah, and I think you, sh- I think you should help the small businesses in the area that can't afford to pay yeah. their employees, but not billion dollar businesses. Work. Right. Of that's course. that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Is Congress is debating yeah. right now on how they're going to save the cruise industry <laughs> when there's people starving to death, and when the, when they're still debating on how we're going to get our measly thousand dollar checks that's supposed to last us. Probably next six months. Yeah, probably. I mean, this I'm could, pretty sure could it, from for while. right now they're only saying we're gonna get paid once. <sighs> so I hope that's uh, that's enough. Fuck, dude, I gotta pay six hundred dollars just to get four rolls of toilet paper no right kidding. now. Oh no, <laughs> let alone my food and whatnot. But yeah, like you said, man, it just I mean, it's a it just kind of the pieces all fell in the place for this movie. Mm-hmm. As far as what's happening right now, it could not have been a better time. But uh, yeah, should we dive into it? And as yeah, we dive into, into it, it, we'll talk about uh, all the all the, the crazy elements because this is it is a brutal film. Just the theme it of it is brutal. brutal. Just the theme itself is brutal. I mean, just the it's a gut shot to see like that could be. I mean, that's capitalism at its worst. Really, mm-hmm. is when it's just everyone looking out for themselves. Right. But uh, that and the graphics themselves are brutal. Mm-hmm. Just the brutality of people kind of eating themselves and uh, <laughs> eating each other and dogs and whatnot. But. Uh, so I'll just give you the premise. Uh, the premise is it's it's this guy. His name's Goring. He wakes up in this giant tower prison, and mm-hmm. uh, what happens every day? There's an uh, undisclosed number of uh, floors that we know at the beginning. Right. He wakes up on four floor eight. He's got a cellmate named Trimagasi. He's this old, uh, kind of an old bastard, I would say. Yeah, definitely. He's mean. <laughs> he's mean. He's kind of bitter, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tells him to stay on his own side the first time. Yeah, tells him to get the fuck back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Even though the cell is huge, it is it's a pretty good. Good <laughs> besides size cell. the nine feet in the middle that you can't really fall into, it's a w- pretty big cell. But uh, yeah, he wakes up. He's on floor forty eight, and he finds out that what happens every day is this giant table of food descends from the floor in the ground. Yes, and goes down. Into uh, every everyone technically it's enough food mm-hmm. if everyone only took what they had to take right and there's two there's two prisoners per platform per yes. level and the platform drops down and it stays for two minutes and then drops down uh, another thing with this is they have uh, this mortality like it'll it'll heat up too much where it'll kill someone and I'm so or glad cool down. that's a small detail that I was immediately thinking Same. about like why not sweep all the food as soon as you get uh-huh. in it and then just eat it and all. I'm so glad that uh, that they touched on that because mm-hmm. uh, a lot of movies could have just 
did it without even showing it. Right. And being, oh, you just got to assume that they're just not going to take food. And I would never assume that. I mean, never. No. I'd be taking plates over to my corner. Absolutely. Yes. But that's the whole thing is like, you can't take more than what you're supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And that was the whole, the whole premise. It starts off very heavy metaphorically with there's enough food for everyone. As long as no one gorges himself. Yes. But you would have to get down farther into the, well, you would have to get every single floor to agree on that. Yes. Like, that's the whole thing is it's it's just not just one person. Everyone has to simultaneously agree. And they can all see each other at all times, too. That's the big important thing is you can see down from you and you, and you can, can see, see up, up from you. Yes. Yeah. And let's just get into it. The people up from you, it doesn't matter if they're 40 floors or one nope. floor from you. They treat you like shit. Literally... They piss and shit on you. They literally defecate on you, yes. I mean, it's literally, it's taking the term, like, the rich shitting on the poor (laughs) to a literal (laughs) term. I mean, this is what this movie does. I mean, that's what it does. It takes everything very literal. But, yeah, at one point, a guy does get shit on. He does. (laughs) And I didn't see a toilet in any of the cells. I was looking the entire time. Nor did I. So I'm assuming you just crap down the old chute. That's what I do. Yeah, the shit always goes down. And that's the way it drops (laughs) down. It always falls down, yeah. So if you're on the top floor, you're not getting shit on. You're doing the shit. Yep. (laughs) But you got to be on that top. You You got to be be that top one percent. Yeah, Yeah, it's the only way. So, uh, so that's the premise. If you steal food, the it either heats up too much where it'll cook you alive, Mm -hmm. or it will uh, freeze you to death. Yep. Which I'd be dead immediately because I would have swept off food and I would never be able to get Get every crumb. (laughs) (laughs) So I'd be just sweating to death trying to get all the food because it heats up. If, yes, it's a very fast process. And I like that scene when he just takes an apple and uh, what's his name? Trimagasi kind of just sits back and he sees him and he mm-hmm. just lets him learn. You know, yep. that's that's the way to do it. But yeah, the first couple of days, uh, Gorg, you know, he, the good guy, he's the hero, of course. He doesn't want to uh, eat any of the food because 47 floors above them have ate it already. Yes. He he talks about that. Trimagasi talks about that. These are the scraps of what's left from everyone else. So the first couple of days, and it's all messy. Like w- when you're looking at this, it's it's gross. Yeah, all the foods mixed up. Uh, it looks like people literally. I mean, people literally walk all over this food as they're eating it. And I love that uh, that element of continuity because as they get to those lower floors, the bowls are clean. Yeah. People were licking them. I mean, yep. there's nothing. But right around like four, like thirty or something, it's messy and shit. But it, once it gets around a hundred, there's nothing. Nothing There's like. nothing. Yeah. It's just broken glass. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. piss and shit. Because yep. people, people do that yeah. for the people below them. I love that scene where it's the first day and uh, they're eating and Trimagasi grabs a bottle of wine and then he just throws it. Here, have some glass in your food. Uh-huh. <laughs> but again, they don't give a shit. They, they don't care. hate you. If you're right below them, they yep. fucking hate you. But uh, but yeah, so food food continues to go down. And eventually, uh, Gorig, he eats a little bit you know, because he's starting to starve. And he finds out that Trimagasi's in there for manslaughter. Yes. He got one year. A, he got one year, and that's uh, that's actually the knife that he brought yeah. in. Was from that whole long story, because he threw his TV I out loved, of the... I loved, I love that story. Yeah. It was really good. It was a great story. He threw his TV out of the uh, top of his room, long well, story short. At first, he buys the knife sharpener. Yeah. That could sharpen any knife. Any knife. Any fucking knife in the world. He immediately buys that. This yeah. is when he's free. He me buys that on TV, and then what does he say? A day later, or something? yeah, they come out with a knife. The that same sharpens, company, yeah, the same company that sharpens itself and gets sharper over time. So you and it's saying uh, sharpening blocks are obsolete. Yeah, <laughs> so, but it's just that you know it's it's uh, metaphorical in the way it's just uh, companies taking advantage of people. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I yep. mean, absolutely. And he got so pissed off about this, he threw his TV off out of his apartment window. And it hit someone and killed him. Killed him. Yep. yep. Manslaughter. So he got a year. He got a wild choice. That kind of surprised me. Yeah, he did. He got the choice go into An a psych ward, asi- which asylum. are nowadays pretty nice. I have to assume this is sometime in the future. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty decent. Yeah, they're not bad. I mean, it's a lot better than a prison. <laughs> yeah. Or you could get five, or you could get a year in the Tower of Hell, where you have, I mean, fifty percent of the time you're you're gonna have to eat your partner. Yeah. When he chose the fucking tower. Very weird thing. Maybe his manslaughter, maybe it was like 12 years, and he was like, dude, I'm already old. I'm going to try to get out of here Possibly, in a year. but even then, it's like psych wards nowadays are chill. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> They're all just chilling. I mean, fuck. You just get drunk. I mean, you get three meals at least. Yeah, at least, That's yeah. the one thing you're going for. 
it, you would have to really, really uh, convince me to take the tower <laughs> option in this one. <laughs> But again, no one. The whole thing is no one knows what this yeah, tower is. No one knew is. what the tower was. That's even a good point. even the lady interviewing him to be in wasn't sure what mm. was going on. She only heard from like rumors yeah. or something. So it's really mysterious. She wanted to go in and try to fix some things. And the group that's uh, doing this all, what well, they're called, the administration, right? They're the ones yes. running everything. So you have the administration, and then the very top floor, you have the cooks and the chefs, mm -hmm. who are who all. And I love these scenes too. Yeah, they're they're good. They're they just they so remind me you dedicated. Know what this, yeah, this movie reminded me a lot of uh, Snowpiercer, especially when we saw the I agree chefs. Too, yeah. I was like, Snowpiercer, okay. but vertical, uh, vertical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw a funny meme that was like that, where it turned the Snowpiercer and it turned the picture sideways. Sim and yeah, wrote, but I like uh, the platform. But I agree with it's not just the theme; it's the tone. Really, mm -hmm. it's that dark kind yep. of gritty dystopian feel to it. But uh, yeah, I agree. Where you have the top, the top chefs, and they have like no idea what's going on. Yeah, below. they have no idea. They're just supposed to make this gourmet this food. Gourmet. And you see these chefs like chewing out the other chefs, like the head chef, yeah. chewing out the other people. Like yeah. it's a big deal. Make this food as best as you can. They don't know what it's for. So each each person that comes in uh, into the tower, you get one item. You can have whatever you want, mm -hmm. anything. You see, some one guy had a surfboard. I didn't think he was going to catch many waves in the fucking <laughs> tower. I didn't think so either. And, uh, yeah, and Goran, he ends up picking uh, Don Quixote, which we don't know if Don Quixote, that's a book largely about a, a class struggle and shit mm. like that. And then, uh, but Trimagasi was smart. Trimagasi knew you'd have some struggles. He did. So he picked the fucking, the, the miracle blade. The knife that he ended up going out and buying. Yeah, the yeah. self-sharpening knife. Good fucking call, Trimagasi. Because Tremagasi explains that when he first started out, because he's been in there a while, he explains when he first started out that uh, that he was in the lower level. Mm -hmm. What was it, 130 or yeah, something? Yeah, 131 or something. And he said, and he told uh, Gorg that after 100, there's no food. Oh. So Gorg's kind of putting this together now, one and one. And he's kind of thinking, uh, how do you survive if there was no, uh, if there was no food? And that's kind of where it ends. Trimagasi doesn't explain immediately what happened, but it, it's inferred that uh, you die, yeah, <laughs> or it, you get eaten. And the whole thing is, you stick with your partner. Mm -hmm. You stick with your same. Cell, so as cell long as you don't kill, die. as long as, or get freed. So mm -hmm. as long as you don't kill him, you're sticking with the same guy. And Gorg knows that. Well, I'm Trimagasi's new partner. Yeah. It later goes on to explain that Trimagasi didn't of, really kill anyone. No, he says his cellmate got out. And a body fell. But it might be bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could definitely be just fucking, uh, just him lying to him. Because you learn, it's like, the metaphor is like, there's no point of trying to reach the top, right? Because you just get shit on. No one's yeah. going to help you. So you have to take advantage of your floor. If you're on the bottom floor, you got to take advantage of any kind of aspect you can. That And that means killing your partner or whatever. You got to survive no matter what on that floor. Because you, you can't go back to the bottom and you can't go to the top because nope. no one's going to help you on the top. So there's no point of climbing. It's the whole thing of climbing the ladder of success and whatnot. It's, again, just another big metaphor. But uh, eventually they wake up in a new room. Because every month they get switched. Every 30 days, yeah, they go to a new level. And they wake up. And they get gassed. Yeah. And, and I really like that scene before they go. They're both laying in bed and um, Gore, uh, Goring and uh, Trimagazi. Trimagazi says, uh, do you smell that? Yeah. He goes, what? He goes, they're releasing the gas. <laughs> That's not fucking good. I no. never want to hear that. <laughs> but I, but what I really liked about that is is the red lighting right before they got knocked out. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying, and then yeah. and then the next morning it was like he was reborn in hell. Oh yeah, all all the lighting was, uh, I mean the the lighting and the the sets were awesome. Yeah, they were both that that big green and red light, like the like a feeding trough or whatever. Mm -hmm. Every time you get fed or whatever, the big green light. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. And there's a lot of out uh, allegory to hell and heaven and. Uh, just throughout well, this film. Yeah. I mean, we come to find out later that there are 333 yeah. platforms. You have two people in a cell. Yes. Per cell. So there's 666 people. Meaning you're in hell, yeah. basically. Or And the 333 floor could also be seen as, you know, the Holy Trinity. You know, 333, yes, the Father, correct. Son, and the Holy Ghost. So once you're on the 33 floor, 
It's just all black. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just all barren and empty. So they they wake up and uh, and shit's kind of not good when they wake up. No, <laughs> I would say well, not uh, good for one of them. Trimagasi got the old jump on the morning. I guess he's more of a morning person. Well, he knew the gas. Yeah, and I guess yeah. he'd just wake up, but he knew the gas, and uh, he knew that when they woke up, that he'd be in a hundred level, and they're really in one seventy one. So he ties up Goring and explains that I can fast for seven days. Mm-hmm. But you can fast longer than seven. You days. can. You can fast for forty. Jesus yeah, did it. Yeah. A lot of people fucking do it. Yeah, yeah a lot, lot of people. people a lot of people fast for uh, thirty. Thirty days. days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This selfish bastard. But he said, after seven days, I'm going to get hungry, and I'm going to start after taking pieces from you. Oh, and he was just talking about taking just yeah, slivers of his Yeah, enjoying it a meat. little too a much. A little too much for not eating humans before. But he explains that he can't kill you now because you're rot in the 30 days. Yep. So I got to keep you alive, eating you just piece by piece. And, and then eventually he offered, I'll he offered feed. him. Yeah, he's like, he offered him a pretty tempting yeah. offer. He's like, I'll give you some. Which you is kind like of it. like a heavy metaphor in yourself. Where mm-hmm. You get so bad, you have to start consuming yourself. And yeah. like it. You become less of a person. You do. Every time you got to eat someone, you mm-hmm. become less. Every time you have, you have to do something. You and have that to do stays with you, too. Yeah, every time you have to do something criminal. But it shows you that these people are willing to do anything to survive. It's like poor people are willing to do anything to survive. Again, heavy-handed metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they wake up, and uh, Goring kind of ex- or Goring explains before this that he voluntarily came into the tower, which not a lot of people volunteer for the tower. No. He volunteered because he'll get a fucking... Diploma in six months. Yeah, and what's his diploma in? I don't know. Torture? I know, <laughs> seriously. Like, what are you going in for? Yeah, what are you getting? Why is this so important to you? I don't know, but it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a thing where, like, you go in there and they can give you anything. Because remember, one guy's got a briefcase full of money he brought into it. And, like, that's not going <laughs> to... That's not going to help you one bit, pal. If anything, that's going to put a target on your back. Yeah. Because if someone does get out, they're 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 going to want that pile of money yeah absolutely and uh but yeah so and they also see an, another character um uh Mi- miru the the girl the girl who rides the fucking, miaru miaru yeah miaru. they they are introduced to miaru and they find out that she uh well termagasi says she's just crazy she is crazy, and she's always they. She gets introduced because she drops down. She's right on the table. She's on the table on yeah. the platform, just sitting there. And Tremagasi explains that there is a a little girl, and she's been. Lo- it's her daughter. It's she's her, been yeah. looking for her daughter. So every day she rides down, and like every floor, she gets like attempted rape. Yes. So she's going down, and she's killing like everyone on the way down. Anyone who tries to hurt her. Yeah, and yeah. there's no like problem with that. No rules against it. No, there isn't. They just put a new fucking uh, guy. There's yeah. always a guy. I'm guessing waiting to be. In the tower. To be in the tower. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So they go down and uh, they see her, and like the first time she goes down, she's just, she's almost getting raped, but she ends up killing both killing the both the guys yeah. and riding all the way down, and you <laughs> she just hears screaming for come uh, from all the way down, and she's just covered in blood. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Well, because again, like almost every level, she's either trying to get murdered or raped. So it's like yeah, or both. You know, <laughs> she looks like she's gone through some yeah, shit some hell sure. every day. But and uh, all she wants to do is find her daughter. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a new day. This is the eighth day, and Trimagasi, of course, he said what he's going to do. He's an, and he mentions he's not going to cut the balls until later. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Would that be one of the last things you want to feast on? I mean, at least yeah. give the man. He made that. sound like it was a delicacy. Yeah, he's like, look, you gotta have the balls. You gotta have the balls. You can't skip those. Nice and squishy. <laughs> yeah. When they I really bite melt into in them. your mouth, they really pop. But. uh. So he's cutting into a leg. You know, he goes for the thigh meat. Who wouldn't? Right. That, that makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah of course. Totally. Yeah. Delicious, succulent thigh meat. You got to go for that. He ends up cutting. <laughs> but who's there to save him? Uh, uh, Hiaru. Hiaru. Yeah. yeah. She uh, beats the guy. Because earlier, tr- uh, Goring saved her. Mm-hmm. Which it didn't matter because she saved her. Then she just rolled down to the floor and. Had to get saved again. Again, but, uh, yeah, by someone. Yeah, but uh, so. Well, she can kind of save herself most times. Yeah, that's what he learned is you don't need to help her at all. You need to help her, pal. Actually, don't even get near her because she'll probably just beat the shit out right. of you. She's like a rabid dog. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what she's going to bite. But uh, she ends up knocking out Trimagasi and uh, Goring murders Trimagasi. Well, you could call it self-defense probably. Yeah, that was a hell of a murder though. Brutal. She stabbed him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he stabbed him a lot. It was Goring that stabbed Trimagasi. Did he? Yeah. 
He gets on top of him, just goes fucking whales oh, on for him. For some reason, I, I remember that as her stabbing him a bunch. Maybe she stabbed someone else a bunch. She, no, uh, he, he gets, yeah, he gets, uh, he gets up and stabs him because uh, the whole thing was the guilt of. That's why he kept seeing uh, mm -hmm. Trimagasi. Right, obviously, was the duh. guilt of him yeah. murdering him. Because remember, she she, got she goes stabbing, then. and then she he looks back to her, and she's like, well, "All right," and she just rides the yeah. floor. Down. <laughs> okay, see ya. Because you can't really get her for a good conversation. Because no, she's only can't. there for two minutes. She, she wouldn't be a uh, very good guest yeah, on the podcast. Two minutes and gone. But uh, right. So the next month after he kind of... Uh, it's a rough go. Because this is day eight after he killed Trimagasi. Yep. He's got to eat He's got to eat Trimagasi. Let's be honest. He eats him. He eats the maggots off his body. It's a horrible, oh, disgusting God. Disgusting thing. scene. Yeah. Very gross. Very gross. But, There's something uh, about foreign films, man. Remember that other movie that we watched called uh, Raw. Raw. Raw was so yeah. good. Raw, and then you got Raw these was movies. French. For, yeah, yeah. These are these foreign films, man. They go hardcore. Foreigners know how to do horror. They, they do. really do. Yeah. Uh, South Koreans make really good horror films as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, French, French. They make a lot of. It's called that's called new wave horror. The raw one, and but the it's all brutal like that. It is it's just brutal, like kind of torture porn where. It doesn't, sh uh, you know, fear showing the fucking the gore, uh, the gore. Yeah. yeah, and I love it, especially mm -hmm. for films like this, where it's a heavy theme, and I feel like everything else needs to be heavy about it too to go along with the theme. Oh, for sure, yeah, it all lines. Eventually, though, a month goes, and he wakes up in a new cell with a new woman. This is level thirty-three, pretty fucking good. Yeah, that's not bad. Who that does he wake eating. up with though? He, uh, the lady who actually checked him into uh, the platform. Yeah, what was her name? Uh, uh, Imagori? Imagori. Imagori, yeah. yeah. She wakes up with her, the guy who checked him in. Mm -hmm. And she's this fucking, she thinks she can change things. Well, and she didn't really know too much about the tower before coming in, either. No, absolutely. Yeah. She reveals that she went in because they promised that after a certain time they will cure her cancer. Right. Remember that? Yep. She shows her fucking whatever. I don't know what kind of cancer that was, mm -hmm. but it did not look good. No, it did not, and it did not last. No, and she, well, well the cancer didn't kill her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I, I just meant her as a person. But she last. went in there to saying that, uh, she went in there thinking that she'd be able to change things. And that she thinks, she said that she went in there and the tower is built to be like a social experiment. Yes. And it's all just to see what it would take for simultaneous change. Mm -hmm. For everyone just to randomly, with no, with no like prodding or anything, just eventually will just say enough. What do you think in real life? If, if this were a real life experiment, we yeah. had to put 333 people or I meant 666 over 333 levels. How do you think this would actually work? It out? would never change. No, you don't think it ever would. No, people at the very top floor would never give up what they have. Just like now, <laughs> people that have so much would never, even though they have more money than they could ever spend in the world, even though that those fucking the people on the top floor have more food than they can ever eat, they're gorging themselves. You know, yeah, it would never. Simult for simultaneous change, like what she was talking about. No, no. What it gets into, like you said, you know, it would have to be something crazy would have to happen to make these people change, you know. And eventually that's what he does, you know. Right, and that's what she attempts to do. And then he says it's, you'll never get simultaneous change. You won't get it just from talking about it. The only way change happens is it's from... Through action. Yes, absolutely. Hitting a few people over the head with a pipe. Or shitting on people's food. Or shitting on people's food. <laughs> that is a possibility, Because she's trying too. to get everyone from... Uh, She's trying to get, make everyone um, just like plates of food, right? Mm -hmm. She's trying to get everyone to, to conserve she food. She does it Just every by day. yelling at a people. And that's never going to work. You'll never, for one, she stops yelling at the people on top. She does. Because it's never going to happen. Like no. I said, it's, it's never going to happen. So she starts yelling at the people from the start, just saying, just pleading with them. They mm -hmm. need it. People on the bottom, are, and uh, they don't give a fuck. No, of course not. The people on the bottom hate the people on the top just as much as the people on the top hate the people on the bottom. Yep. But uh, so eventually Goring was like, fuck this, you stupid bitch. You're not doing anything here. <laughs> and then he starts yelling, I, I'm going to shit on you. I'm going to shit on the fucking food so you guys can't eat anything. So you got to tell the people on the bottom floor you're going to shit on the food unless they start conserving. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way that it starts happening. Yep. They actually start... Uh, it starts starts to get make some change, you know. Starts a to make some bit, headway yeah. a little bit. Yeah, people are still not fucking happy. About no, of that. course. And it's still it's not the change you want to see. 
You know, no, because you, you want people to change because they yeah, want exactly. to change, yeah. not because they're forced to change. Yeah, not because you have to threaten them or mm. whatever. Oh, if I could just put like this. But yeah, so so things are uh, progressing, and uh, oh, oh uh, Imaguri, by the way, she brought her dog. That was her one pet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she brought her dog. I forgot. And about I that. knew immediately. I know. It's smart. If, like, you plan on eating the dog later. Right, But yeah. she never did. No. And the dog's name is Ramsey's the second, which I think played a role in something <laughs> for some reason. It like, did. the murder it's... of Ramsey yes, the second. the Egyptian. He, just... His favorite pet was a dog. And whatever, that was supposed yeah. to signify, because Ramsey's the second was, like, the greatest Egyptian leader, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And his murder was supposed, to reg- was supposed to show, like, that was what kicked off change. Yep. Right? But I don't know. I just feel bad for that little wiener dog. I know. You know dude, what, I'd be, you know what I would be bringing? My pet cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my or <laughs> pet pig. <laughs> or something delicious I can eat if things got really bad. Where I could feed like 50 <laughs> people if I needed to. Don't bring your fucking dog. Bring something you something you could eat. I totally agree with that. It's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. It is. Because I guarantee things are going to get bad where I'm going to have to eat that dog. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to eat that dog. No. You know I don't. And it's a wiener dog. They don't have a lot, a lot going on, meat wise. No, you know? <laughs> they're all torso. They're they all. <laughs> Didn't she end up uh, gutting that thing? Mihar or Miharu? Yeah, yeah Miharu she, did yeah, not gutted that. Not not uh, not in Murguri, but uh, Miharu. Yeah, did. Miharu. Yeah. yeah, just for no reason, I think. Yeah, I didn't know why either. Just she, she was just riding like, the tables <laughs> down. Like I gotta kill something. <laughs> I'll kill this little dog. Because don't they wake up and uh, they wake up? And the dog's dead. Yeah. Right? That's no, it's uh, they were happens. doing the platform thing. Yeah. And then they didn't realize that the dog had gone mm-hmm. had gone off. Had uh, gone off, and then she killed it. Yeah. Yeah. So As she was going down. That's right. The dog, they weren't f- w- watching the dog. And I knew in this fucking scene someone was going to have I'm like, watch that fucking, because you can not see the dog in the whole scene. Mm-mm. So you know he's getting up into some fucking drone. And they were both over at the table, and then I was like, okay, I, I see how this yeah, is Yeah, and going. that's kind of the tipping point for uh, Imaguri. Mm-hmm. She kind of says, uh, well, fuck, this is just not worth it, man. Nope. This was way harder than I thought. You know, it's, it takes more than a... That's what the whole thing was. It takes more than a symbol, right? Yes. For change. It takes an actual movement, mm-hmm. right? It takes action. So the Because the, the, the symbol of the Panacota in the end when they wanted to send the dessert up, that ended up not being enough. No. They ended up having to send a fucking person. Up. A child. Yeah, up. exactly. Yeah. So... Uh, Gorn wakes up on a, a month later on two o two. She finds out, he, or he finds out, Imagori hanged herself. Yeah, he just gets up, looks at two o two, and guess who's hanging right next to the two o two? Yeah, as soon as she fucking saw that two o two, she said, said, "Okay, I'm Adios. out." <laughs> yeah. It's been real. But folks. she did it something cool. Real. Where instead of she threw herself down the thing that most people do, yeah, she hung herself. She hung herself, so he could yeah eat her. Absolutely. And we forgot at the very start, maybe probably the most important scene out of any, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Trimagasi, he, he starts out with a quote and he says, there's three kinds of people. Yes, there are. There's people at the top, mm-hmm. there's people at the bottom, and then there's people that fall. And that kind of signified to me that, you know, obviously we have people at the bottom that will always be on the bottom, people at the top that will always be on top, and people on, on the top that attempt to make change, mm-hmm. but end up falling. Yep. To their death. Yeah. <laughs> in the tower, it's to their death. But it, and it that, means, that's even metaphorical, too. I yeah, mean, absolutely. Like, yeah, with, yeah. With your career yeah. choices and stuff. Exactly. If you do that, get to that top, it, you can fall and lose everything. Yeah, and if you wanted to make change, you would have to give up everything from the top. That's yeah. what it means. For real change, you would have to you know change yourself. So you'd have to give up and fall to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately... It's not metaphorical when you're actually in a giant tower. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where a fall from the bottom usually just means you got to move to a trailer or something. Yeah. This one means you fall 80,000 feet and you hit every, every floor on the way down. It's like a fucking pinball machine. Oh, oh God. But, uh, yeah, so he wakes up two and two. She's uh, She hung herself, but uh, she left the meat, um, which is nice. Yeah, that's nice of her. A month goes by, he wakes on level six. Mm-hmm. Which fucking level six, you're getting food untouched. But on, on 202, when he's when when they're doing that montage and he is feeding on her flesh, and then he starts to have the um the hallucinations of Trimagazi. 
talking yeah. to him and, and you know what I mean? Like yeah. being like, Oh, you're a part of this now. Yada, yada, yada. You're yeah. a murderer. Just like, and I, I love that. How he was like, uh, I'm with you forever now. Yeah. Cause every I'm time, inside. Yeah. You. Every time now I'm with, it's very, it's just so much, so much to break down. Like there's yes. so much you could do where it's like, maybe he's an interpretation of death or something. And then she maybe, cause remember he starts seeing her too. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot you can break down again. It, it's, it's, it's good. It's a good movie for rewatchability. You can keep rewatching this movie, but uh, yeah. So he wakes on uh, little six, and he's got a new roommate. He does. This guy's fucking off the wall crazy. He is off the wall. <laughs> At least he's not a murderous psychopath. Though. No, he's he's the part of the human that is just trying to reach the top. Yep. Through hard work. Yes. And it it would just went to show you that it just isn't enough. It's just not about hard work. It's something else because he. It's about having, you got to have some help. You got to have people on the above reaching down and helping hand. Not the case that happens. Not at level five. His whole thing was he came in with a big rope. He did. (laughs) Because he's thinking, I'm going to reach the very top and I'm going to get five levels. That's not much. You only got, I mean, you only got to climb up five levels. That's nothing. It's nothing. He can't even climb up one fucking level. He throws up the rope and they're like, yeah, come up. And he, and he climbs all the way up. And as he's about to reach the very top, the girl pulls her pants down and literally shits in his face. Big old shit. Duke right on his face. That was a great scene. That was funny. I was like, oh my God. It was good, man. But it was, it was, it was just that whole thing. It was like, holy shit. Like that's <laughs> Rhett's, Rhett's the rich <laughs> shitting on the on poor. The poor yeah. But I never People thought I'd like. actually be seeing a video. <laughs> You never think you'd see a literal translation of that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of rich people sit around thinking about <laughs> it. But you people, don't, but... yeah, physically taking down your pants and being able <laughs> to sh- not not being able to just to shit on the poor, but being able to shit on someone trying to, to make, make, their, make their, their lives, lives better. better. Mm-hmm. And totally, that was the worst thing he ever did. That was the worst law he or the worst law he ever committed or breaking the law was trying to make himself better because you just get shit on. You do, and. uh that kind of and he loses his rope, he did, which is shitty because that's the only thing he brought on. Yeah, and that fell all the way down. <laughs> so and some other guy at the very yeah, bottom has got a rope. Like, I'm taking it to the top, baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's Barat. So Barat's a real uh, character. Yes, right, and uh, and he convinces, uh, well, Goring and them eventually convince that they have to, they got to do something, right? So they end up that they're going to ration out the food after the first five levels. They're going to ration down the food. Yep. They're going to get on the platform and go down level by level. And and then when they start going down, we realize that they're holding off the food for the first 50 levels because those people ate yesterday. So they can go one day without Well, food. it's the whole thing where like uh, Goring was like, we have to send them a message, a message that they can't ignore. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so the message was going to be, Ration the food, but leave this dessert, the panna cotta, yep. to completely unfazed. And then it will bring it back up. And they'll be like, holy crap. They'll be so astonished by this. They'll be like, oh, my God, what have we been doing with these poor people? We got to change everything. <laughs> it ends up, which I like, it ends up because that ended up not being enough, of course. No, of course not. <laughs> no. But, uh. Yeah, I, and uh, I it also being where I don't even think the the rich people would have realized what it symbolized. Mm-hmm. You know, like like he was. I think the the whole thing with the hair and the dessert in the past, or you know, showing that there was something wrong with it, which that is was showing was that what it would have been like if that dessert has been sent up. They would have not been able to think it was any metaphorical or anything deeper than whether these people just didn't want it because something was wrong with the dessert, right? But, uh, yeah, so they got to go down, and it's like a Bruce Lee, like, game of death thing where they got to go all floors yeah, every and beat floor. the shit out of everyone. <laughs> I love those montage scenes, too, where they're hitting people over the head. And oh, it's gory, gory, too. That fucking girl that comes up, uh-huh. where he's like, stay back, and she just comes up and starts eating, and he goes, two-hander, Tomahawk, and just I know. <laughs> But he killed her for sure. He definitely killed her. You could have gave her a warning tap Or first. just a knock in the nose oh, or something. Geez, like man. You so gotta have people for the revolution. <laughs> you gotta have people on your side, man. But I you guess be killing them all. It means, man, you gotta knock some heads I to have. start the revolution. Some so. people gotta go. You know. Yep. <laughs> some people feel the fire. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they're going floors down, and uh, but the first fifty floors, like you said, they've had enough. Mm-hmm. They they can survive without doing it for one day. Yeah, for one day. So they're going down. They're ascending. Once they get to the fiftieth floor, though, shit starts getting bad. It does. 
Because now people are starting getting desperate. Down and there. they're hungry down there, too. Yeah. So they also want the food, but, but they now are, they're being told to ration it. But they are giving, yeah, For so for the first time they've seen food, mm-hmm. but they're not being able to just go crazy. Nope. They're they're being rationed. But it is this thing where it's like a lot of these people wouldn't have gotten food in the first place. So for these portions, it's like life-saving. It is. And it's like. Uh, in a lot of cases. Yeah. And the whole thing is like with with uh, Trimagasi, he what he kept calling uh, Goring uh, like the Messiah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh-huh. And that's real on the nose. Cause really he, metaphorical. Because he, <laughs> he is. Well, we'll find out. Is he is um, the Jesus archetype, right? Yes. He does sacrifice everything for another person. Oh yeah, and he definitely sacrificed his position. Yeah, absolutely. Whole, and they were on six. Yeah, right. And sacrificed his life at the end. Because we're assuming exactly. the last yeah. level, he'll never to die to for die. our sins yep. is what I got from it. Yep. But uh, but yeah, so uh, so they had to give up everything, like the like Trimagasi said at the start. Now they're falling, right? So uh, so yeah, so they start going down. They get to a hundred, and uh, there's one really cool fight scene with a guy that brought a samurai sword. Yeah. <laughs> That was smart, though. I mean, hell, if you're going to bring a weapon, I would bring well, a samurai. You could bring right? anything. You could bring guns. So why not bring a gun? Yeah, I know. And just these a guys box are full doing an old school. <laughs> they are. They want the honor. They want the tradition. Well, maybe it's things like you bring the gun, but you can't bring the bullets because mm. you only bring one item. That would make sense. And bullets are yeah. multiple items. Yeah, with a knife. With a knife, you know. You're pretty good. You don't got to reload a knife. No, you do not. <laughs> no, it's a multiple multiple time use. So maybe that was a thing, but. Uh, but yeah, they said you could bring absolutely anything. But uh, I would definitely have brought maybe a crossbow. Do you think that would count as one item? Mm, arrows too. Arrows, no. damn. I know it's always a two piece set. You'd be lucky though. You went in with another guy. A lightsaber. And you're like, look, you bring. <laughs> That'd be cool. You're the best one. But you gotta be like, you look. You bring the bullets. <laughs> yeah, and I'll bring the gun, and we'll just go locked in together. Hopefully, yes. we're on the same level, my guy. And then as soon as I get one bullet, I'm shooting that guy and taking, <laughs> taking his bullets. <laughs> absolutely. But uh, yeah, so they start going down, and they're pushing, they're pushing down, and they meet uh, they meet a character that I don't even know how to explain it. The old guy, what I'm talking about, the old blind guy, right? They meet a character. Oh yes, yeah. And he's kind of I don't even know how you would explain this guy or how you would even kind of relate him. Maybe I don't even know. He just he's like a wise man. He tells them that. For one, he sees they've been beating the shit out of everyone. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? They're like, we you want to change the world? And you're just... <laughs> you're beating There's no one up. left to change. Yeah. yeah, you had to kill all these people. And then he tells them... Uh, the uh, Barat tells him about the Panacota. And he keeps saying, that's a symbol. That's a symbol. And he's, and then the old man says, that it's not enough. They're like, they won't see this. You need more than a symbol. Yep. You need something physical. Something that they can't argue. Something tangible. They give him a little food and they keep rolling, right? Nothing else happens to yep. that guy. Unfortunately, they reached to a floor where uh, where Marara was, mm-hmm. and she's already getting stabbed. She is. She's dying. Yeah, at this moment in time. That's the samurai floor yeah, where the white guy is. with the samurai sword. <laughs> May she rest in peace. And all, all she wanted to do was spend time with her daughter. Yeah. Well, so. we think it's her daughter. We do. Because remember earlier on, uh, Imogurgi said that it's all shit. That she's just an actress. She's an actress, yeah. She's been in here so long that she's crazy and she thinks... But I think she was all... I think that chick was all bullshit. I think she believed that she was telling the truth, but she was fed bullshit. Or she was fed... The administration said there's no way there could be a kid in here because there's only people under 16. Mm -hmm. And she believed all that. And they told her that this lady's been in here. She's crazy or whatever. Really, I don't think she was crazy. I think she did have that kid. From rape, obviously, yeah, obviously, and yeah. she she was raising it, but it, but what Gorian is told, and what Gorian believes at this moment is that she's just crazy, mm-hmm. and she's an actress just pretending to have this kid, right. and she just rides that fucking table down just for shits and gigs. I, she loved that's it. a hell of an actress. You know what? That is an actress dedicated yeah. to her role. What role do you I think mean, she God. is prepping for? Prepping where for she has to kill hundreds of people every day. I have Mulan. <laughs> I don't know, man. I have no idea. It's just crazy, but uh. But that's the end of her. It is. She dies, unfortunately. She is a sacrifice. And Barat is mortally wounded from the samurai sword to the gun. Mm. And Goran gets the shit beat out of him, too. I forgot that about he that. he does. His face gets pummeled a very... I don't know, just something about in movies when someone does a really good job of just showing someone get punched over and over in the face. It's just brutal to watch. 
But, uh, yeah, so they're not looking good right now. No. <laughs> but they're at level 250. But they thought originally they there was thought, only 200 they, yeah, levels. Yeah, they thought it was just 250 and it would stop. But then it kept going. And that's kind of just crazy to think about, you know, that they don't know how deep this goes. Mm -hmm. And that 200 levels they thought was crazy amount to be sharing all that food. Now 333 levels. It's a thing where, like, the people that built that tower never intended for those people on the bottom to get any food. No. No. 333? That's the most never. you could fucking have. Yeah. It, to me, it seemed like they were adding levels. Like, they just kept adding and mm. adding and adding levels. Yeah. Instead of replacing people, they just add and added. Where it may have started out as 100, where they were getting the same amount of food for 100 people, and then the food stayed the same, but they just kept adding. But the system just grew. Yeah. And it grew and too still much. still the same amount. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's yeah. what I was thinking, where... And the last level they it's added, like the population. Yeah, though. and the last level they added was level three hundred and thirty three. Being three hundred and thirty three, that was the level that shit was going to go down, right? Because it had to. But uh, but yeah, so they get down and they finally reach three thirty three. They do the bottom fucking level. But Barad has uh, died from his injuries at this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Gory has just been asleep on the yes, fucking yeah. table for the last <laughs> he, eighty four. He, he took a nap. He did. He took a nap. He took a nap, or he needed to after the beating he fucking got. But, uh, but yeah, so Gorn uh, wakes up, and, uh, well, he finds that uh, that there's a little girl. Mm -hmm. And this is surprising to him, because he didn't really think. Uh, well, Brock's still alive at this point, because well, yeah. Brock's the one that tells right, him to yeah. feed. They find the girl in the whatever, and then they bring her down, and as they're going down to hit 333, that's when he dies. Yep. But that is the last level. They found the girl at like 250. And the whole fucking, the Panna Cota that they've been mm -hmm. <laughs> killing people to protect, yeah. they end up having to give. Feed her. Feed it to yes. the girl. Which is, which is a, a complete 180 on what all this movie was about, which was greed. Yeah. And that oh, they gave yeah. the one thing yeah. that they had to the girl to feed her. That kind of put the whole thing on its head. Yeah. Well, that was supposed to be the symbol. But the yeah. symbol was actually feeding her and sending her. And the ending to me is where it got kind of murky. Uh, just because just so much of what they're trying to do and whatnot and what it was supposed to represent and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, like you said, they end up giving her the food. And that wasn't just her their food. It was the entire thing. Yeah, right? it, it was their symbol. Yeah, yeah it, it was everything it was they what had was gonna, So they had to sack. But then they're realizing that, fuck, this girl wasn't supposed to be here in the first place. So sending her up will be... Uh, is the message. It's the fucking message, yeah. yeah. Which I don't understand. How is she being fed so well when, uh, again, uh, there was something to be involved with. She could take food off the table and it wouldn't hurt her, right? That was how because she, she wasn't one of the she was, inmates. Yeah, she wasn't on the list mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's why she was being able to, to get fed or whatnot. Yeah. But it still wouldn't make sense because, well, one, the, the chick would have to be storing food away, right, as she goes down the levels. And then she would have to take it off. So you think she would something would happen to her if she took the food off. That's the only thing where I thought at the very end, it kind of, and you just that, had to move pieces to where you had to get the girl right, up at yeah. the end. And I don't mean to be dark and morbid here either, but I don't understand how the girl survived because if there are yeah. two inmates on each level, bad things are going to happen. And she'd be getting an inmate every right, time. Right, exactly. I think the whole thing meant, I think you were supposed to believe, well, again, it gets murky, and this is where uh, I think, to me... It was the entire movie was great until the end gets kind of like like you said it gets cloudy because what I'm guessing is she was going down and killing the people on her floor every time mm -hmm. and they're just letting her and they're just taking the floor up and then giving her food and keep doing that right. every fucking day yeah but that would mean that she would have to do that every single day and how fucking tough is this chick pretty tough <laughs> there's no way that she's killing people I mean because we saw that she just died randomly mm -hmm. from the samurai yeah so, from the samurai so eventually guy. someone would have to get lucky. Yeah. To kill her. I would say so. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because she would have to be going down there every fucking day. So, I mean, it's like, I don't know. But at the end, of course, uh, Brat dies, and they end up uh, sending the uh, the girl, the little girl up. Mm -hmm. And uh, Goring, you know, he's pretty fucked up at this point. Yes. Although he probably could have lived. Yeah. Probably. But he ends up walking away with Trimagasi. Yeah, it, the illusion of Trimagasi. Yeah. The, yeah. Whatever's left of him, I guess. And uh, and he tells him, too, that the message requires no bearer. Exactly, because the whole thing is like he was 
he was like Christ bearer, right? He was yep. bearing the cross for him. And then he finds out that uh, at the very end, you know, you don't need to go up a third. You've gone long enough and now it's her journey or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it would be more powerful if just her came up than you. So now he's got to make the ultimate sacrifice. Yep. Which okay. is his life. Exactly. Which again, I don't I don't really understand. He just kind of walks away. He I'm just in it, darkness. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, is I there like does it just fall off? Death, or, yeah. It obviously meant that he just died, mm -hmm. but I I don't know. And fuck, dude, that tower goes up a thousand miles an hour. Isn't she just gonna get spooked? Planted on the fucking <laughs> like a bug on a windshield. They're like, oh, what the fuck was that? That thing flies up fly there. Out, I'm yeah. guessing it must slow down. It's got to slow down at some point. I mean, the way. But every time we saw it, it was like the whole thing was like you couldn't jump on it. Uh uh. -uh. <laughs> you no, have to time it, it so yeah. yeah. You'd probably just get a leg fucking stuck and you'd be dead oh, anyways. Yeah, you'd break it. Well, everything would break. Yeah. Even if you tried to fall down as it caught you, there's no yeah. way. <laughs> No way you could time that. But it's going up so fucking fast that it would stop immediately and she would fly to the sand. <laughs> fly and be 300 nothing. feet yeah, up in the air. That's why I really thought at the very at the very end, I thought it was going to be like a... Uh, I thought the table was going to land and it was going to flip over and flip off all the dishes. Because again, that top mm. flying dishes would be flying yeah, everywhere. Yeah, if it was going <laughs> right. <fast>. So, <laughs> so I don't really know what was keeping the dishes on, but... uh. That's why I thought. Cool. I thought at the end it was gonna like flip over and like garbage and then go all the way up. But I Did don't know. Do that. They didn't really explain too much at the end. And you just you got the metaphor through and you of got course. what it represented. Yeah, you got, yeah. yeah. And they're it just, probably running out of time there. Let's yeah, just and it just had to happen. Down. But um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the end of it. But again, is. what I was saying for to me, what represent uh, I thought like the administration, the people running everything. Uh, were God mm -hmm. and the people on the tower were uh, were the people and every every time every day God sent down his bounty what he believed to be what was enough for everyone you know the, the well we talk food. about that we talk yeah. about that biblically with like uh, Moses and sending um, manna from heaven and quail but you weren't allowed to take more yeah in, in the ancient you know Hebrew text you yeah. weren't allowed to take more for the second day, otherwise it was spoiled. And God that night. and God is just sending this down in this movie and just assuming that oh, these people are gonna take care of each other. Like God, mm -hmm. it's almost this thing that God is still there, but he's not seeing what's going on. It's yeah, it's called a deism where God uh has the world, he kind of spins it, lets it take yeah. its course and steps back. Where he's still, but yeah, and at this point, it seems like you know someone had to step in and kind of wake God up. And that <laughs> hey, was, man, this and that, is not, yeah, and that was the whole thing. If you believe here. the administration was God, was that was the whole thing that they were going to send um, this girl up, and the administration would see this and be like, "Well, what the fuck? This is impossible. There can't be a child down there. No one's allowed down there." And they'd be like, "Oh, the whole thing is fractured, and if a kid it can slip through the cracks, then this thing is imperfect. So we have to shut it down." Yeah. Hopefully that's what happens. I would maybe have liked to seen some kind of like, like maybe she goes all the way up and we see just like five seconds of like the chefs the and reaction. the cooks and all just like standing around it quiet. Like, yeah, not even no one's talking. And the guy, the head chef, like dropping like a dessert or whatever, because mm -hmm. you saw how precious it was. And it could have dropped the uh, the panico. Uh, yeah, it yeah. could have dropped it like been that. A good turn there. And then, then that would have been like, oh fuck, like oh we got to do. Instead of them maybe just seeing the girl and being like, oh who gives a shit? You know, things are gonna <laughs> happen. You know, get her off that table yeah. and let's let's just keep going. But uh, anyway, with closing thoughts. Uh, I I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was very, I thought it was, for as far as Netflix films go, very, very good, I thought. I mean, uh, it had, it wasn't a perfect film. It has, it had its uh, its faults. But the overarching metaphor, I thought, even though it was heavy and it kind of hit you over the head, it didn't feel too pretentious. Like it was saying, like, I don't know, like, let's go kill the rich or whatever. Let's of go, course. you know, let's rise. It, it was, it was, well, it was an like, obvious message, but yeah, it was, it was, but it was also done in a way where you could definitely have seen that happen. Exactly, had this yeah. actually yeah. existed, you could see the people above you, not, not giving a shit. It is a possibility. Absolutely. That's the thing where it's like, and that's where it's not thrown in your face because it, it deals with realism too yeah. under these circumstances. The th I, I never felt like people just wouldn't act like that. I never felt yeah, that never. through that movie. Mm -hmm. No, I, I felt like, Oh shit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's especially people who've been in there a while, especially when it's that, um, that's simplified. Yes. 
where it's not hoarding money or hoarding resources. It's, it's, it's literally food hoarding it. food, and that's it. And the people at the very top have the most, and the people at the very bottom have the least. Yep. People at the very top hate the people at the bottom for having less than them, even though it's completely random. That was the that was the craziest part of this movie. It was. Was if you're at the very bottom, you felt so, I mean, you just, you know, you felt horrible. You felt like bad, you know, you're feeling bad for everyone at the bottom. Mm-hmm. But if you got one floor above that fucking bottom, you hated those. doesn't matter if you were the second to the last floor. As long as you were above one floor, you fucking hated the people yep. behind. You would just say, for no reason. None. Just because you're supposed to, because the guy above you hated. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was good though. I'll, I'll give it my grade. Okay, I gave a a B, a solid B. Wow, a B. I really? thought it was good. Yeah, you really enjoyed this. I did. As far as sci-fi films, you know, yeah. I got a soft spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think this movie is simplified. Um, by no stretch of the imagination, you're not going to see anything crazy. Um, the message is pretty on point. You know exactly what you're going to get when you watch this film. Uh, And it is like Snowpiercer. If you've seen Snowpiercer, we also did a review on this podcast a little while ago on that film. It does deal with a lot of the same themes as Snowpiercer, but it takes its own spin on it. And with anything good, anything that's being made, um, I I think that's a big positive. If you can take something that's successful and make your own own spin on it. And that's what I feel like this film did, too. Uh, again, another foreign film that that I was pleasantly surprised with. I thought the voiceover work was really well done too. I thought it was synced up so because uh, I did the audio. Did you do the audio with the English translation to the audio? I did. I, w- I wish I didn't actually because I prefer subbed over dubbed. Well, normally I do too, but like I for whatever reason this time I I because I just clicked on it. Yeah, and mine was, mine was automatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you didn't even want me assume I I couldn't read. <laughs> yeah. Like just assume we're it's all like illiterate. Yeah, it's just, but, but I I I listened to it and I I thought it was uh, I thought it was well dubbed over. I just like the over overarching theme of this movie. So uh, for me, I gave it a little lower, which I normally. Normally you're you're always the one true, who's got the lower, but uh, for me, I, I gave this movie a C. I enjoyed this a lot. I think you should go and see it. Um, and and it's ninety minutes. You know, it's done in an hour and a half, and it's not going to take a lot of time out of your day. And I'm sure you got a lot of time anyway with this. And especially scenes. now when people are like fighting over fucking toilet paper and shit. I mean, exactly. it's the whole thing of it has that message too. It's the whole thing of don't take more than you need. Mm-hmm. That's the entire premise yeah. of this movie. The title could have been "Don't Take More Than You Need," <laughs> and it would and it would have worked perfectly. But I mean, if they were sending down toilet paper on that table instead of food, yeah. it would have been right on. Exactly. You wouldn't have double. You wouldn't have guessed it. I mean, you wouldn't have second guessed it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the whole thing. Yeah, when people are running in and you know those people on the bottom, like old people right now, they need the toilet. they need it. Yeah, it's pretty sad when Safeway's got to go. Okay, from seven yeah. to nine a.m., we're only allowing people sixty years or older in. Well, it's sad for this. Like, it's sad for this movie to exist and be and us being like, yeah, yeah, that would happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 so nonchalant like, about it. Like, yeah, we know. Like, yeah, no one would give a shit about us. No, no one would send down a piece of cake if I was on the fucking bottom floor. Nope. Hell no. Even though those people on the top four are fat as hell and just getting fatter too. But yeah, I mean it's I don't know. It's it, crazy. Yeah. It's it, a, it deals with structure though, yeah. like but but throughout mankind. I mean, yeah. think about kings. Kings were the same way. They had a glutton of, of wealth. They would tax these poor yeah. people who could barely pay them. You know, that's where like these stories of Robin Hood come into play. You know, still from the still yeah. from the rich, give to the poor. Well, that's what Don Quixote is. Don Quixote is kind of the death of like uh, knights and chivalry and everything like that. So it shows like the significant of a, of a new beginning. But yeah, like you said, I mean, kings are like always looked at as just being the greediest. But fuck, we got kings now, man. They're just not called kings anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of running kingdoms, they run Walmart and shit like that. I mean, they're bigger than kingdoms. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, the fuck, they got more people. They get they, they can start armies if they wanted to. But uh, but yeah, if anything, this film you watch it, it will give you something to talk about it does. with whoever it you watch. Mm-hmm. And if you're desperate for like a, a discussion or anything like that right now, which a lot of people are, then I think this is a, a good film to start a discussion. Definitely, I think if you have a weak stomach, though, I would uh, stray away from this. For both reasons, the premise is hard to take in, and the gore you're seeing. Yeah, both, pretty, yeah. both. It's a intense. brutal. It's a brutal film. Super, yeah. super brutal. So, alrighty, uh, that is our that is our review and recap for the platform on Netflix. Uh, go go and check that out, guys. On Netflix, watch that movie if you haven't. Um, check us out on social medias. 
Facebook, seen, uh, Have You Seen It podcast, Instagram, Have You Seen It, and Twitter, Seen It podcast. Cash is on Twitter. That's just cash. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. We're, we're trying to grow our YouTube uh, platforms. We're trying to work on a few new things, a few new videos uh, to do to put on our channel, trying to get more active there. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notifications for all of our videos. Uh, do, do we have anything else to plug? Anything else? Uh, leave us a review on iTunes. If oh, you could. yeah, always. Uh, for sure. Five-star review on iTunes. We could definitely use more. Yeah, we did get a few more, um, but but we could definitely use more. Let's know what you're watching during the corona. I mean, everyone's watching yeah. movies, playing video games, doing something. It's doing true. puzzles, I guess. People I still guess do puzzles. Pu- people are doing puzzles right now. I've, seen the, puzzle. I've seen the puzzle. the puzzle craze. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a good business you want to get into, puzzles. Puzzles and toilet, toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. What else? What else is people uh, doing right now? Hand sanitizer. Higher internet's being throttled all over the world because too many people are using it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's not good. No. No. Well, you want to get, you want to use what you pay for. You do. And I hear because uh, I pay last, almost two hundred dollars. Last a time month I heard the companies internet. were like, just don't use so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it. I pay you fucking two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, for but don't my use internet. don't use everything you pay for. No, is what I'm saying. Right. You know, just don't you pay for it. Yeah. But just don't use it. Just don't, yeah, just yeah. pay don't for it. Selfish. We're just asking you just for Don't be pay. selfish. <laughs> <laughs> this is all movie's about, okay? You can pay for it. Don't use it, okay? Just don't use it. Yeah. Well, very minimal. Well, what am I going to do? I got to stream things. I got to watch things. That's why I got this podcast, okay? They Give tell you not to, okay? They do. I just don't get sit it. In, sit in the dark in a dark room doing nothing. <laughs> Twiddle your thumbs. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, my name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Adios.